Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight, the 26th of January, Tom Adams, joining us for the first time, is going to wow us with a couple of his favorite hoppers. One of the hoppers is my favorite as well. Weekly tip, darn if Tom isn't going to come back and, and share that with us as well. Hi there, I'm Al Beattie from Boise, Idaho. My lovely wife Gretchen is not with me tonight. She's out of town visiting relatives, but she'll be back next week. And uh, for now, let's, uh, let's spotlight uh, the star tonight, Tom Adams. And Tom was born and raised in North Carolina, where he learned trout fishing from his father. He's a retired professional fashion and tabletop photographer. He's been fly tying for 25 years, and that includes photography for several publications. Tom is a past Trout Unlimited president, and he is now that same Trout Unlimited chapter's fly tying teacher uh, on their website. He has over 130 trout patterns. In this session, he's going to be demonstrating a couple of really great parachute flies that I used all the time I was guiding in Montana, the Schroeder's Parachute and the Lawson's Henry Fork. The Lawson's Henry Fork is my pattern. Boy, I love that pattern. Tom, it's all yours. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? It's good? Sure, you're yeah, coming through loud and clear. Okay. Um, right. I think the Schroeder... I first discovered the Schroeder, I guess, 20 years ago. Um, it it's it's my favorite, uh, and I really like I really like Mike Lawson. I really like his patterns, and and it, and it comes a close second, I think, because I started with the Schroeders first. Um, I have a I have a, I have a theory that uh, I don't know. It's just my theory, right? So when I fish out west, we usually go out in the in September. Uh, sometimes it's late September, but it's usually at least after Labor Day in the middle of the month. And and I feel like um, th those trout have seen so many fat alberts and so many so many foam flies. They're just like well, they they just aren't fooled by them anymore. Um, and and the the Schroeder's fly is 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 a real natural looking fly. It floats natural in the water. Um, it doesn't take the abuse that that the, the foam flies do, and it's not as great a support uh, if you're doing droppers. It, it does. It's not that, but um, the fact that it gets beat up too that doesn't necessarily take away from its effectiveness. Um, the first the first time I, I think it turned the table for me. I was fishing the fire hole down in the in the in the braid section. And, and I, I caught the largest brown I'd caught today. It wasn't that big. It was like, it was, it was like 18 inches. It was big for me. And um, I, I was there was no turning back after that. So I've been, I've been using it. Anytime I use a hopper, it's my it's my go to. Um, this is this is the Schroeder pattern, and I've tied this as a high vis. Um, there, you've got options in here. Um, I'm going to do a size 10. The one I just showed you is a 10. Um, uh, you know, you, you sort of, you, you guys probably fish enough to know you, you, you want to sort of go after what you're seeing as naturals. Same thing with color. Um, you can change some of the color aspects to be more, more yellow or more gray or, or, or more olive. Um, we're just going to kind of go in the middle here. I listed, um, I used uh, Danville um, 60 thread. You could use, any any thread or you, you know, that, that suits you. Grizzly hackle, kind of straightforward. The abdomen, I, I use hair's ear, um, um, or, or super fine. Uh, the rib is the traditionally is is a uni uh, three o. Overwing is a um, uh, turkey. The thorax is just a continuation of the same diving, and the pheasant tail. Uh, the the legs are pheasant tail. I'm just going to start with a layer of. Thread. We'll tie the. Um, I usually start. I, I try and give myself a little room at the hook eye. So I'll do. A, I'll do about a half or so of a, um, covering the shank, and then we'll do the. And we'll do the. Um, I just coat. My, my, my thumb and index with it. 
um, like all of them, you want to do, you want to start really fine. So this is that vinyl rib. Of course, this is this is three O um, uni. Uh, when you do the three O uni, you need to make sure you twist it as you go, so that you keep it narrow. I'm sorry, I forgot this. I got distracted. But I'm not done. I'm not finished it with this. I look today. I use it for nymphs. I don't, or or even wet flies. The thorax, whoops, the thorax um, will do as well, but we need a little cushion. I found if I just do a small a small dam on either side to trap it. Then I can make these turns and we'll cut off as extra just to get this out of the way. To get my wraps to go up. It actually probably does repel water. It's probably not too bad. And we'll come down again. And then once once I do that, you can see, I wish it was closer. You can see there's still a small gap. So we're going to go back and continue. Um, post yet. So I'm going to cut a piece of and pretty substantial. And I'm going to trim off some of the real dark. I really don't have any access. I'm just gonna cut it. I really don't have access to the to see it. I should have rolled it over. There you go. Before I dub again, I'm gonna go ahead and tie in the the um, wing. I mean the uh, the hackle. I usually try and get one or two in front. And one or two behind, and then trap that puppy.
All right, so now we're ready to do the post and the uh, hackle. I used to do about five or six turns, no more than six. I want it to um, float well. Straight ones here. I kept expecting somebody to say something. Um, I do all my parachutes this way. Um, I guess everybody does. Non traditional, but. I can get my dubbing all the way up to the eye or whatever the material is I'm using. I'm still looking for the fly. And I'm short in this guy. So that's it. It's a it's a pretty straight up pattern to what I've done. So I'm gonna show the Henry's Fort. Um this is this is the Mike Lawson Henry's Fork pattern, and it's a little harder to tie. That's why I want to do it second. But um, yeah, and I, I'm showing yellow thread it, because we're we're kind of going with a yellowish tan natural tan body. Um, the abdomen, the underwing, and the head are all tied with elk. So the underwings, uh, you can use regular. You don't have to use the oak rump there. The overwing is um, uh, pheasant. You can also do hen. I do use fleximate on, so I pre-prepared, um, usually what I do is like a dozen at a time. So I'll pre-prepare. And then the, I don't usually use legs. We listed legs because some people have to have legs. So he designed this to be easy to cast in the wind. So I stack these um, and then backwards, not by the tip. You trim these up a little bit. I gotta put thread on them. Um, and we're gonna go with yellow thread. Um, we'll even this up one more time. It's kind of irregular, so I'm gonna. Just square it, not, not obsessed with it, but just kind of square it up a little bit. So we want this to be uh, a little past halfway. We'll continue to narrow this a little bit. It doesn't matter a whole lot. If you get it too dense, then it'll actually interfere with the with the um, loadability, I think. One more time. Just going to clean up these spikes a little bit. Now this next part is going to be the true aggravation. Now, once this is in place, but you've got all the, many of the hairs you can get on the one side. Keep your, keep your thread fairly short. And I'm gonna pass this over my hand, see I drop some because I was looking at the phone and make a wrap and then we'll do it again. Another wrap. That's that's on the same spot. And then again, I apologize for bumping the camera. Two or three is plenty because you don't want it to be 
This isn't a mayfly, right? So let's go get a couple more to secure it and then bring it back to rest at the bottom. So, um, so now we're going to go back and split this again. I'm just going to push with my finger. Wet my fingers a little bit and then bring this forward. I'm going to pull pretty hard on this, and it's okay if it flares. We'll do another wrap here, another wrap here, another wrap here. I'm going to bring it back one more time. You want to cut away all this waste. You want to cut it as close as you can. Okay, just a few loose ones, that's not too bad. All right, so let me get some wraps on this to get it secured. And these we stack by the tips, the sort of normal, normal method. And we want these to just rest on the top. I'm not pulling tight there, but I'm going to go forward a little bit. I'm not really going to put the whammy on it. And there's something we're going to do at the end, too. Once you got it secure, you come back to about the first section and put a couple of soft wraps, and that'll trap it, but keep it flat because you don't want it to flare. My mother used to say, don't do as I do, do as I say do. Wing on before you underwing before you put the top wing on. Not really that hard, is it? We're going to trap this guy on top of the soft wrap. Check the position. Do several to secure it. I'm going to bring it. I'm trying to hurry, guys. Too. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to do the same thing like I did on the wing. So these two, once they're cleaned, you want to stack them by the tips, and we're going to make the head out of this. Get it secured right at the eye and then take turns back. Whoops, take turns back to the point at the at where the abdomen starts or the yeah, abdomen starts after the thorax. And then cut these guys close. And I'm just going to push, push it back.
Okay, well, thank you so much there. Now, you're going to be back in just a minute, so don't go running off, Tom. We, we've got a, <laughs> another plan for you. And let's get ready to move right into the tip. It's like a 20 or 30, I don't even know, 30-gallon tub full of dubbing, um, <laughs> which reminds me of something. And I, and I have to make myself not buy more, um, which reminds me of something else, too. So th 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 this is a pack. Of, this is one. This is just Whitlock pat, uh, dubbing. Um, it's different kinds. There's SLF and other kinds. But the the tip are these things here. And, you know, I think since I've started doing this, um, uh, Loon or Hairline or someone has introduced a product that's a, it's really more handsome than these. It's a it's a it's a nice piece of uh, like rubber coated wire with a little little screw end on it, so you you can put your your carded material on on that ring. But but these rings, I, I looked, you can get uh, sixteen of them, three dollars. These uh, it, it, this just comes from Staples. You know these are ring they're 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 called ring binders. Um, but but this this two inch this two two inch size. Um, has, or, is, is, or inch and a half, has been the deal. Thank you for those tips. And that uh, yes, your organization, though though you claim to be a messy person, um, you have pretty darn good organization there. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'm old, you know. I'm trying to make it work smart, you know. <laughs> I, 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 totally, I totally understand. Well, thank you, Tom. I'm sure I appreciate yes, sir. great presentation tonight. Good, now good. We're, we're heading into the last item which is uh, sharing, and let me do the, <laughs> the announcement on that. Tonight we got sharing on BTs. We got several people have already contacted me uh, wanting to share items. So what we're going to do is, and Paul had a nightmare the other night, and this is the result, and you can explain <laughs> it, Paul. <laughs> All right, I did the, um, the, I call it the GB streamer, which was Gretchen's thing, and uh, I used all sorts of materials that I have here. And I started off with uh, the tails, which are a um, makeup brush fibers, which I talked about before. And I like them because they're strong and they're easy, easy to use. The thread I use in the wet, for most of my wet flies, is a nylon stretch overlocking thread, which is I call woolly nylon. It's strong. It soaks up the water and it's easy to use. The big thing is, is it, um, it costs seven dollars and ninety-five cents for fifteen hundred meters, which is four thousand nine hundred twenty-one point two five feet in real measurements. <laughs> you, the the thread or the wire I used was uh, stripped from electric cable. The uh, the red portion I didn't use floss. I used um, the red woolly nylon. I've become a real um, poly yarn fanatic lately, and my third. So the wings are poly yarn, and my first thought was that the was about the buoyancy of the poly yarn. But then I thought my um, I use a braided leader for you know when I want to put stuff underwater, and I thought the braided leader would pull it down. But then I put them in the water, and I realized that it doesn't really matter because the fly sinks because all the other materials soak up the uh, soak up the water. The big thing is is that I tried. I, whenever I tie peacock curl, I like to make a dubbing brush using the Norvice, uh, where you strip and runs along the thing. And initially, I tied just one bit of peacock curl tied in the wing, and it looked like crap. So that wound up in the bin. And so what I did now is I use a peacock dubbing brush. I wrap a circle of the dubbing. Then I tie in the wing using the dubbing brush, and then I tie in the additional um, bits of dub dubbing so that I wind up with the thing like she had before. We had the, the peacock curl, the wing, and then another bit of peacock curl on the end. And then I tied in the feathers and something I learned on Sherry's last not, last Zoom meeting where he tied it in the bottom, wrapping around. And I always like to... Um, Treat my um, train my fibers with my cute purple and black hair dryer. <laughs> Great, thank you, thank now, you. One other, one other 
one other thing. Yesterday, I was playing around with Stick Caddis. Now, can you let me share, screen share, Al? Looks good, Paul. Today? Okay. And what I did was I took some packing, packing string and made Stick Caddis out of it. I just wrapped it around the, the thread, roughed up, uh, wrapped it around the hook, roughed them up, and then coated them with the texture pen, which was you know, don't have the ineffable rat dubbing, and I got all this thread hanging around. And I wanted to talk about a fly, the this right here. Wow! Uh, in a few weeks, I'm going to be doing a muddle may a fly that I developed back in the '80s uh, for the organization. But this fellow by the name of Ryan Morgan has been trying to learn how to tie the things on his own. And this is a picture that he sent me this last week wow. of the muddle may. Now he's modified it a little bit by putting hackle on it instead of having a deer hair hackle, but I think he did a pretty good job. So my hat's off to you, Ryan. Good job. Yeah. Now we're going to move to Chuck Ballard. You replace spotlight. There you are, Chuck. You go, oh, I like that. Yeah. Let me tell you this. I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could tell you what that material is, but it comes on a card, the wing, it comes on a card and it's the <laughs> finest metallic gold. It looks like golden pheasant crest. Okay. And it, you can see it, it can be strict, stroked on there very thin and just brushed out with a toothbrush. But it is a, makes a beautiful uh, steelhead fly. This wow. particular one, I used uh, organza for the tail. It's a slightly different hue of gold. But is if you, I wish there was some way to see that, that, that uh, color. It is just stunningly beautiful, the color. I have one last thing to share with you before we... The other week... Jerry Chris on the Oregon group shared with us a UV glue dispenser that he really liked an awful lot. It's called Bondic. And I'll tell you what, it's the slickest thing that I've seen in a bit. And I'm going to show you how it works because just about 30 seconds before we went live tonight, I tested it with a couple of guys that came on early because they had bought the Bondic too. So let me show you what we've got here. I'm just going to open this up. It's a nice little cute little metal box. Instructions, which I didn't read. And on this end, you've got glue. And on this end, you've got a light. The UV light. All in one thing. And I think it was 15 bucks for the whole thing. But let me move over to the vice. And you can see I've got a little drop of glue on there that I've already tested it. And so I'll put another little drop of glue on. What I like about this one is you can see that that's got a really, really fine point. So let me just kind of put this over on its side so I can put a little drop right there on the side. Turn it around. And turn on my little UV light. Give it about four or five seconds, and there it is, just slick as a whistle. Nice. Oh, very good. Boy, what they won't come up with next. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to have to stop going on any Zoom calls, because every time I go on one, I find something else I can't live without. <laughs> so, <I'll... laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, on this uh, Friday. For now, it's a wrap. We'll see you next week.